Yes. Well, what you're doing in Atlanta is very important because you're further defining the progressive agenda for our country and the way our country relates to the world. And uh, the Democratic Party has not been very good at doing that. Uh, unfortunately, they've be become very good at electing very bad Republicans over the last 20, 25 years, and we hope that will change uh, shortly. But what you're also doing is raising people's legitimate expectations. Everything starts with higher expectations. If we don't expect anything of our politicians because we think they're all crooked or, or have sold out, guess what? They're going to deliver exactly that level of expectation. So good luck. Keep raising the expectation levels and raising the civic energy that you have to propel out of the Atlanta meeting all over the United States. It's all about civic energy. It's all about people believing in themselves that they do count and they do matter, and they can fight City Hall and Exxon. Four different positions in the backbone cabinet that Ralph Nader has been nominated for, uh, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Transportation, Attorney General, and Administrator of the EPA. Well, any one of those are hypothetically a good thing, as long as the White House doesn't interfere. Uh, if, you, if you could have your pick, which would you choose and what would you do in your first 100 days? Well, let's pick the Attorney General. And uh, in the first 100 days, I would make a uh, justice uh, declaration that this country is a country under the rule of law and that people who are accused of anything are going to get due process, probable cause. They're not going to be arrested without charges, imprisoned without lawyers, as we've seen in recent years for thousands of people in this country. 99% uh, of them were innocent from the get-go. And I think it's important to do that. It's important to reassert uh, constitutional processes in this country uh, from the lawlessness and the outlawry of uh, previous administration. Uh, second, what I would do is announce that every year the Justice Department is going to put a state of the justice report out. What is the state of the justice in America? What are the criteria to determine whether we got more justice or less justice? Where? When? How? So that people start thinking about progress in the form of justice, not just corporate profits or GDP increase. Third, I would start enforcing all the laws that the Justice Department is supposed to enforce that they hardly ever enforce. The antitrust laws, for example, have very, very weakly enforced. The environmental crime uh, statutes need more resources uh, to be enforced. When the Food and Drug Administration doesn't recommend a criminal prosecution, even though the drug companies have behaved criminally and lots of people have lost their lives due to dangerous drugs that were not uh, recalled or noticed uh, or adequately tested or covered up, um, the Justice Department should encourage the FDA say, why aren't you sending us uh, these cases? And I think by giving in the first hundred days the American people a sense of a Justice Department that's properly named as such, um, they will become uh, more demanding of justice because they'll have an ally, they'll have a friend, a very powerful friend in Washington. And that's part of the 100 days is to get people to raise their expectations and not to take it anymore when they are uh, uh, harmed or dismissed or excluded or repressed. Uh, the Justice Department has a lot of work to do to recover uh, its reputation. It is becoming increasingly known as the Injustice Department. And the first hundred days is the period to set the pathway, set the vision, and set the course of law as if people mattered first, not corporations. Thank you, Ralph Nader, very much. And uh, we hope we see you okay. uh, running the Justice Always. Department uh, at the beginning of the next administration, if you're not running the entire administration. <laughs>